Hey guys, welcome to Superlative Radio. Dylan Stone here with you. Hope you enjoy the following vlog. Hey guys, welcome to another vlog here on Superlative Radio. Today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about, um, well, <sighs> how you can compare medical systems across different countries. So, any of you guys that have been watching for any length of time um, might have noticed that we've talked about a lot of different topics and a lot of different things in our vlogs, but a lot of things often aren't really conveyed necessarily sometimes the way they should be. But I want to talk about the medical systems and not just here in Canada. When you compare it to like the United States or the UK or France or whatever, when you think about, like one of the big things as an example that um, Americans seem to push against is socialization, socialism, socialism's bad, socialism this. I watched a show not long ago called Good Girls on Netflix. And one of the characters in it, she has a daughter who needs a... Uh, kidney transplant I think it is it's a kidney. anyway and it boggles my mind that you know the amount of money that they have to pay whereas when you look at Canada we don't have to pay that you look at the UK they don't have to pay you look at France Germany Italy Spain you know almost all of Europe you know like so much of the rest of the world has a socialized medicine of some kind you can argue as to how well or how not well certain ones of them work. But I guarantee you, I would rather have a socialized medicine system than what the, Uni the Americans have in the United States. And the reason is, is because when you look at what the Americans have, almost everything is out of pocket. It's crazy expensive. Yes, you know... There was a, a, a comparison that I saw not long ago between the United States and Norway. It blew me away. Uh, it was going around on Facebook, and I happened to see it. And Norway is the fourth most happy country in the world. The United States was 16th. The amount of taxes that they paid was almost identical. Yet, people in Norway were getting weeks of vacation every year paid vacation they were getting free secondary education free health care all the same you know wonderful first world living things that we have over here in North America yet in the United States almost everything is being paid out of pocket to people rather than the government doing what it should be doing which is taking care of its citizens the point of socialism is not what the vast majority of Americans think it is. Socialism is not communism. And if you think it is, you're an idiot. All you have to do is look up the definitions. They're completely different. Communism and socialism are not the same thing. Are they based similarly? Yes. But they're not the same thing. I would much more prefer to live in a socialized country than a pure capitalist one like the United States. And the reason is, is because capitalism is the doom of all humanity. And you can agree or disagree all you want. The fact remains, nothing in this world has been as successful as socialism. And I know that there's a lot of people out there that'll be like, what did he just say? Well, the fact is, is socialism has moved the world far further than capitalism ever has. And the reason for this is because almost all of history consists of socialization. Almost to the point of it being, like when you look back at like monarchies or anything, I mean, they're all basically a socialist system as well. So when you look at what socialism actually has been, you know, here you have a system where it's more important that a pharmaceutical company is pocketing money than it is that they're handing out the drugs that people need to stay healthy or to get better. That's not right. 
Now, even in Canada, we have some of this problem too, because part of the, one of the greatest advantages Canada has ever had in its history is that the fact that we're right next to the United States, meaning that they have ensured practically the safety of our country based on our geographical location and not for our benefit, but for theirs. Like, let's not, let's not fool ourselves for a moment to think that it's because we're such great allies. It's not. The reason they are willing to fight and die or whatever it might be to protect Canada is because they don't want an enemy moving in on their northern border. That's what it really boils down to. I hate to say that if you're an American listener, but that's the way your government actually is. It's got nothing to do with the fact that we're your largest trading partner, that we're the biggest exporter of oil to you, that we're the biggest uh, fresh water supplier of you. All of these things are only because you don't want the Russians to step into Canada and be right on your border. Which, if you hadn't have been there as the superpower that you are, probably would have happened at some point. We can discuss socialism till the end of time, but let's take a look at what has come about from socialism. I'll give you an example. In Canada, when we had the uh, the issue in, what, the housing bubble and all the crap that collapsed, what was it, 2007, 2008, whatever it was around there, okay? Um, the Canadian government, under the wise leadership of Stephen Harper, the asshat that he is who deserves to, you know, whatever, he decided to bail out GM in Canada, much like Obama decided. Was it Obama or was it, was it Obama or was it uh, Bush? Bush, I guess, that decided to bail out GM in the U.S. Why would you do that? The fact is, s- capitalism, if you want to be a capitalist society, then be one. Capitalism states you succeed or fail based on your own merits. That's what it is. If you're successful, it's because you're successful because you've, you've, you've trudged it out and you've done what you're supposed to do. But if you fail, it's because you fail, right? You're not supposed to be looking for a handout from the government. But yet, in Canada, now, the government had the choice. Bail out a failing company like GM, or he could have given a million dollars to every man, woman, and child in the country. That's how much money Stephen Harper gave to GM. Minimum. I believe it was more than the 40-some million we had in in population. But he could have... Now you think about what would be better for the economy? For everybody to have a million dollars or for GM to get bailed out? Well, I don't know about you, but if we all had a million dollars, what would have happened? Well, people might have paid off their debts. They might have bought a new vehicle, may not have been a GM, but they would have bought a new vehicle probably. Might have bought a house. Might have put money into renovations of a house they already have. How much would the economy have boomed from everybody getting a million bucks as opposed to, and they could have made it taxable. Hell, still, if you'd had had to pay 20% of that back in taxes, you're still up 800,000. I mean, think about that for a moment. You could have given everybody enough money to boost the economy far more than bailing out one failing company that was failing because it was making crappy automobiles. And to be honest, to this day, they still build crappy automobiles. Like, let's be realistic. When you look at Ford, GM, and Chrysler, what do they build? Garbage. They may as well be on the same level as Kia and Lada because they build garbage. They don't even build cars to last. It's disgusting. And they pawn them off to people. And I know this because not long ago, my girlfriend bought herself a brand new vehicle. And while buying a new vehicle, we test drove multiple different brands, all roughly around the same price point. And you want to talk about, you want to talk about quality and what you get for what you pay for? Go drive yourself a vehicle between the prices of $25,000 and $30,000 Canadian, okay? That will fit you generally a Corolla from Toyota, a Civic from Honda, or it will buy you one of the crappy low-end GM cars. 
You drive all three of those and tell me which one of them drives better, has better materials, and isn't full of crap. Won't be the GM one, let's put it that way, because they're just garbage. So when you bail out a company, you know, or you bail out Wall Street, you think about the boom you could have given to the economy by giving your citizens that money instead. It would have been more beneficial for the country overall. Socialism isn't a bad thing. And in fact, even in the US, you have socialism on levels you don't even think about all the time. Your police, your fire, your, your education system. So many, you, the, the construction and building of your roads. And so there's so many things that are still socialized. There's nothing wrong with socialism. What's wrong is pocketing money, knowing that you're doing it simply to make more money for a company's bottom line than helping a fellow human being. Think about that. Catch you guys for another vlog right here on Superlative Radio. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hey guys, thanks for watching Superlative Radio. Come back anytime. And when you do, please make sure you subscribe, make sure you leave a comment. We really want to know what you think. We'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other, because that's the way it's supposed to be.